Hey guys, Chelsea here from Making Manzanita, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use a power roller to paint a room faster. So big thank you to Wagner for sponsoring this video. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Wagner Smart Sidekick Power Roller. And it simply clamps to the edge of the can or bucket of paint, and then the paint comes up the suction tube and directly out of the roller. All right, so I am just unpacking the sidekick for the first time. So I'll give you a little closer look at um, everything that comes in the box here. So they have a great owner's manual that's super detailed that I would recommend you read through before using it. Um, but then they also have this nice quick start guide which just goes through the cleanup and the setup. Um, so this is nice just to keep handy after you're familiar with the product. Um, so everything unpacked here. All right, so I just um, was getting it unpacked here and I started, um, I wanted to just make sure I knew how to take the roller apart before there was a bunch of paint on it, so that's why I'm doing it now. Um, I just wanna make sure I know how everything works. So I actually had to just um, text my friend, Amanda, because I could not figure out how to take this apart, but really, I'm gonna put it back and see if I can do it. Um, this just pops on. Okay, so this is how you'll get it in your box, and you wanna be able to take this off because I we usually just um, use a new roller cover every time we paint because they're really cheap to buy and they're kind of a pain to clean. So um, that's why you want it definitely. And you're, you're gonna need to take this apart to clean it. So this little end that has um, the lines here, you just can pop it off. You kind of have to pry with your thumb um, and it kind of hurts. Um, you could put a towel there if it's hurting your thumb, but you can see there it comes apart. And then this roller cover will just come off and there's a plastic tube on the inside and you can see there's like some slits in there so that the paint can come out. And then the piece that goes inside is this metal one. And this as well has holes in it so that the paint can come out that. So that's kind of how everything works. And um, so once you get it all back together, this whole thing works. I need to put this part on first. There we go. And then it just clips into place right there. So then this will be your cover that you use. And this is the kind of sidekick machine. It clamps onto your paint bucket right here with this attachment. Um, if you're using a bigger five gallon bucket, there's this extension cord that you can add in here to make this longer. Um, but this is the tube that's going to go down into the paint bucket. You want it to be down at the bottom. And then this is the tube that will attach to your roller that the paint will come up. So you can see here that this is just going to pretty simply snap into place. And then if you want to use a longer pole, um, an extension rod, that can just screw in here and you don't need anything special. You can just use like a normal one we have this one um, that we're gonna use and it'll just go into the bottom here. So that was something I wasn't sure about when I was ordering it, um, if I was gonna be able to use an extension rod because I was worried about this um, tube coming out, but it comes out kind of the side and so you can still use a rod there. So excited to get The this setup is pretty simple. You wanna be sure to shake and stir your paint can before you begin. Then you just take it off as normal and you can simply lift up on the edge of the paint can to put it on the bottom lip and then just use that yellow guide to push it down into place and put the suction tube in the little holder there and be sure that the suction tube is touching the bottom of the paint can. And you'll hear that yellow part click into place as it attaches. Next, you can work on getting the roller attached. Now it's time to get that roller attached. And again, I showed you at the beginning of the video, but that roller cover just comes off the metal and it clips into place right there. And then your handle also just snaps into place and you'll hear it click. 
and then you're ready to go. You can plug your machine in, push it, push um, the power button on, and then you use that yellow button on the handle to turn the machine on. You'll hear it turn on, and then you can see the paint going up the tube, and you just wanna follow it all the way up the tube. It may take a second to get all the way up, and then once the paint has gone all the way up the suction tube, you can start rolling it on the wall. So you wanna leave the power turned on for the machine and just keep rolling it. You'll see, it may take a second for the paint to fully saturate the roller, but you'll see it's starting to come out here. At first, it's gonna be a little dotty and then you'll see it fully saturate the paint roller. And the best way to tell this is just to paint on um, a dry part of the wall. And if you see any of the back, you don't wanna see any of the background color. So that's, that's how you know it's fully saturated. So once it's fully saturated, you can push that button again on the handle, the yellow button to turn the machine off and it will stop the flow of the paint coming out of the roller. And then you can just simply use the roller to spread out the paint that's already on the wall. And I like to work in a W or an M pattern, kind of zigzag across the wall and work in about three foot by three foot sections. And then this is simply how that extension rod um, goes onto the bottom and just simply screws into place. It's pretty easy to use. Um, so you wanna, again, work in three foot by three foot sections. And once you're done with um, a full section from ceiling to floor, you want to do one slow solid swipe from ceiling to floor. And this is gonna give you a nice even paint finish and you won't see any of the roller marks. So one thing to kind of keep in mind is you don't wanna oversaturate the paint roller because it may drip or slide against the wall or start splattering, but you also don't wanna undersaturate it and then it crushes the fibers on the paint roller. So it's kind of an art and once you get some practice in, you'll see what I mean um, and you can, you'll, you'll have a better understanding of when to turn on and off the machine. But you can see here that I was able to work really quickly. I was actually pretty shocked at how much time I was able to save by not bringing the paint roller off the wall and dipping it into a paint tray. And that usually ends up being a mess for me anyway. I'm a pretty messy painter, so I usually end up dripping it all over the place with the paint tray. So I was shocked at how much this really helped me paint. The other part that I was pleasantly surprised about was how easy the cleanup was. It really didn't take as much time as I thought it was going to take me and the owner's manual that comes with it is really clear and simple to follow so you simply just pretty much run water through the machine here's how that dark gray paint color turned out I absolutely love it and I can't wait to continue finishing our living room makeover be sure to follow along as we completely transform this space all in all, I think that the Smart Sidekick Roller from Wagner is a great tool that's definitely gonna come in handy for future painting projects. Thank you so much to Wagner for sponsoring this video and project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the Smart Sidekick Roller or just painting in general, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to help answer them. And if you love this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We share tons of renovating and DIY tips. See you guys next time. Have a great day.